I've been ministering inside of the Wisconsin State Prisons for the last five and a half years. As part of that ministry, I began doing pastoral visits inside of the segregation units in some of the maximum security men's prisons. As a result of that work, what I saw and heard and stories that I was hearing and reading from prisoners, I took a vow to make visible what the torture and the abuse that I was seeing in how we make use of solitary confinement or what we call disciplinary segregation in Wisconsin. So we decided that we would actually build a life-size replica of a solitary confinement cell. We worked with a set designer from a theater department in a small college in our city and he helped um, to design once I gave him the specifications for the cell and we had it built so that it's transportable. We installed it on the steps of our state capitol earlier this fall and now it is on tour to various church congregations. To make the cell portable, we had it built in sections that could be transported in a rented U-Haul truck. The long walls, which are 12 feet long, are built in two separate sections. The end walls are separate pieces. And then the roof is also constructed in two sections that can be lifted up and just put into place. The walls have hardware within them, which is locked with an Allen wrench, so the pieces are stable, can't fall apart. The door is put on a slide so that it moves across in the same way that a real door would. The simulation of the port we made by cutting a metal mailbox in half and simply installing it on the front of the door along with that piece of sheet metal along the bottom that simulates um, the port through which your ankles would be shackled. As you can see, it's not very big. We did it to specifications of one particular state prison. It's six feet two inches wide. I'm five foot four. As you can see, I can almost touch both walls. The bed um, would be made of either concrete or stainless steel. There would be a thin mattress um, that could be removed if you got into more trouble. So this is the surface that you would be sleeping on. Also, I've been told by many formerly incarcerated people that our cell is accurate, but it's way too clean. It would be, the walls would be scratched up, the cement block would have residue of blood, feces, food, urine, um, scratch marks from people who were just trying to have some effect on their environment. We also, um, this is a replica of the sink and toilet combination built all to, also to the specifications of what would actually be installed in a solitary confinement cell. As part of those specifications, the manufacturer makes it clear that they have made it suicide resistant. On the wall, we have a piece of sheet metal. In reality, it would be a piece of stainless steel. This would be your mirror. And we've been told, again, by former prisoners that it's not scratched up nearly enough. The dimmer switch we installed because the lights in solitary confinement are generally kept on 24-7. The prisoner has no ability to turn them off. And prisoners in our Wapan segregation unit a few years ago did win the right to dial their lights down to 60% on rather than 100% full on. But that's as dark as it would ever get. And when you're sleeping on this bed or trying to sleep, you would not be allowed to pull the blankets over your head to block the light. Uh, there also are questions sometimes about whether we should have installed a window in the cell. I'll step over here. Again, in some of the cells, there would be a long, narrow window. Now, some of those cells, the glass would be opaque, so all you would see would be shadows. Um, sometimes 
that glass is painted over. Sometimes it is clear, but you might be looking at a 20-foot cement wall. Um, in the Supermax prison in Wisconsin, there's a panel of glass along the top that looks out into an aisle of mechanicals. And there are skylights out there, so you would get some indirect light coming through that glass, but not much. I don't think you can call that a window. The floor would be concrete. And the door, we did build it on the outside. We didn't build it on the inside. There would be a port here, and all of your food would just come through this port. If you were being taken out, you would be shackled. Um, might be the four hours that you're allowed out of your cell during a particular week. So you would put your hands through this port. Handcuffs would be put on. And then there's another port along the bottom. And you would be shackled. Your legs would be shackled through that port before you would be allowed to step outside of the cell. Um, I hope some of you will consider building a cell in your own home states. We installed this cell on the steps of our state capitol, as I had said, it was, and it's moving around to different congregations. It really makes a difference when people can actually stand inside a cell, even spend an hour inside of it, and get a much better sense of what it would be like to spend weeks or months or years or even decades inside of a cell like this. Um, and it would not be quiet. Uh, it would be crazy loud with crazy pounding, banging on pipes, screaming, yelling. I'm told by some prisoners that it's only quiet for the 10 minutes after food is delivered. Otherwise, 24-7, it's crazy, crazy, crazy loud. To make it more realistic so that people really get the experience of what it would be like to live, in, live inside one of these cells, we added the element of sound. It's very powerful. Underneath the bed, we have a small guitar amp, cable connected to it, and an iPod with an audio file of the sound from an actual segregation unit. what it would be like if that was your reality 24-7, again, for days, weeks, months, or even decades. So if you do take it upon yourselves to build a cell, we will have specifications for you, but you'll need to find the exact size of the cell in your state. And while you're building it, while you're sitting in it, while you're installing it, please remember that in this country alone, there are estimated to be at least 80,000 men and women who are in solitary confinement as we speak. Please remember them. Thank you.